Thank you. I know. Can't touch this. I'm going to start requesting that as an intro song every time I do presentations. I just told my intern, I said, you know, I really, really, really need an intro song every time I do a talk. All right. Let me get my slides pulled up for all of you to see. Can we see those? Yes. Hopefully so. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. We can see. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, it's thank you everyone for joining. My name's Amy Goodson, as Nate said. I'm a sports dietitian in Dallas, Texas. And, you know, I've really worked peewee to pro in sports. Long, I've done a lot of work. So my master's degree is in exercise and sports nutrition. Worked in the college level at TCU for 10 and a half years. Worked for the Dallas Cowboys for almost five Worked in professional baseball for six, I suppose, and then professional golf, soccer, lots of high school and middle school athletes, because zillions of them still do it now. So I like to think that I have a pretty good breadth of knowledge from like junior high all the way through like the NFL and Major League Baseball, because I've seen it at all of those different levels. So my goal today is to, no matter what level you're at, is to give you some nutrition information that you can really take with you, start to apply for your team, for your athletes, if you have work with younger athletes for your parents. I'm all about making it practical. And so today that is the goal for when we leave here. So what we are going to be talking about, and we have a short period of time, and I like to say a lot. So don't worry, we're actually going to send these slides out to you so that you can have them after the fact in case you'd like to get some of the information from them. So we're going to be talking about fueling the day because that is essential to an athlete's regimen. It, to me, it doesn't matter what they ate pre-workout if they didn't eat well or anything all day long. So we're going to do some quick basics on fueling the day. Then we're really going to dive into fueling training, performance, and recovery. So let's say fueling and hydrating to really look at what we should be doing pre, during, post-exercise, competition, et cetera. And then I'm going to give you some fueling schedules so that you can really look at if you are your team or athletes are training in the morning versus the afternoon versus a two a day, what that type of schedule might look like for them. And you're welcome to print those off and give them to them as well so that they are able to start following how they should be fueling their bodies. So when we talk about fueling the body, Obviously, many of you probably know this, but nutrition plays such a huge role in giving athletes energy, helping them recover, improving their conditioning, improving their muscle mass, sparing lean muscle mass, building lean muscle mass, and ultimately is helping them become a better athlete because they're able to perform at a more optimal rate and then ideally recover at a more optimal rate as well. So I like to tell athletes at any age that nutrition to your body is like gas to a car. And when you are moving your body a lot, it's essential that you are fueling it appropriately without enough fuel or without taking good care of your body going to fall apart like your car will. So it becomes essential that we're really doing what we can to fuel the body, not only around that workout, but over the course of the day. So starting with a few fueling basics, just to lay the groundwork, carbohydrate, body's number one source of energy and an excellent source to fuel exercise. So putting it in the, in the space of sports nutrition, pre-workout, Carbohydrate is really designed to give athletes energy to get to and through that workout. So think bagels, think brown rice, pasta, potatoes, oatmeal, cereal, fruit, those types of foods. During a workout, those simple carbohydrates like the sports drinks and sports foods can really help maintain energy levels. Post-workout, it's all about replenishing those energy stores that were burned during the activity, whether it was a training session, a lifting session, or some type of competition or game. So ideally, we want athletes to be eating those more quality carbohydrates, the whole grains, the fruits, all of those things that we know are good for them, and saving those simple sugars that are more processed for less often. But an athlete's goal should be to get carbohydrate at every single meal and snack over the course of the day so that when they get to your workout, your weightlifting session or your practice, they have good fuel and are able to do whatever it is that you're asking them to do. From a protein standpoint, protein slows down digestion. So in the sports world, I think we always think build lean muscle mass, repair lean muscle mass. But from a digestion standpoint, protein actually slows down digestion. And why that's important is because it can help stabilize your blood sugar. So from a pre-workout standpoint, I want carbs and protein to help stabilize the blood, their blood sugar so that they have a stabilized energy level leading into the workout or the game. 
during a workout, we're really not looking at providing protein. It's not the best source of fuel during exercise. We're more just focusing on carbohydrate and on fluid. Post-workout, protein takes the cake, right? It becomes very, very essential. And I'm going to talk through some of those numbers in a minute. But providing high quality protein in that immediate window post-workout is really going to be what helps your athletes recover and start that muscle resynthesis process as soon as possible. Ideally, we're looking for athletes to be eating high quality protein over the course of the day. So think any animal food, beef, poultry, fish, eggs, dairy, some plant foods do provide pr protein as well, like beans, nuts, seeds, legumes, but we get more grams of protein from animal foods. So as long as your athletes eat animal foods, we ideally want them eating that high quality protein at each meal and snack over the course of the day. Here's a chart to show you how much protein an athlete needs. It's really individualized to the athlete's weight as well as to the sport that they play. So typically for most really active athletes, it's in that 1.2 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram body weight. Now, when we talk endurance athletes, it's about 1.2 to 1.4 grams. When we talk about our, think like team-based athletes that have a need for strength and endurance, Think soccer, volleyball, hockey, basketball. They're kind of in the middle at that 1.4 to 1.7 grams of protein per kilogram body weight. Then your strength athletes going all the way up to two grams. While this doesn't like shake out perfectly, two grams of protein per kilogram body weight is about a gram per pound. So if you're trying to educate a young athlete, that's the way you could do that, especially if they're trying to gain lean muscle mass or they're in a strength-based sport. So it's very individualized to those two things. When we talk about the next macronutrient, fat, fat really helps improve satiety. We have good fats and bad fats. So ideally we want our athletes to eat less of the bad fats, think fried foods, pastries, baked goods, all the things they love. Never seen so many high school kids eat chicken strips and French fries as I have going into a workout. So who knows, but really trying to help them get those healthier, unsaturated fats that can help fight inflammation. So we're talking the fats that you find in fatty fishes like salmon, trout, tuna, nut, seeds, nut butters, avocado, those healthy oils that their parents might be cooking or they might be cooking with. So fat calories are about 20 to 35% of total calories kind of varies. The key is for me that an athlete should be getting carbohydrate and protein at every meal and snack. And they are kind of sprinkling in those fats throughout the day. Of course, we want our athletes hydrating. To drink a bottle of water before a workout is not enough. They need to be hydrating consistently all day long. So we know that a 2% level of dehydration in the body equates to about a 10% decrease in performance. And as dehydration gets worse, performance declines. So I like to tell athletes, if you walk into a workout or a game, dehydrated and your team, the other team walks in hydrated, you're already at a deficit. So it becomes very important that they are drinking fluid consistently over the course of the day. So when we look at that and I'll put, paste it together with pre, during, post a little bit more, but here's where you can see that pre-workout, we're wanting about 16 to 20 ounces of fluid with that pre-workout or pre-game meal, and then drinking consistently leading up to the start of that workout. Could be water, could be sports drink. During a workout, the goal becomes about drinking about five to 10 ounces of fluid every 20 minutes. Note they do not have to drink in 20 minute increments, but consistently drinking that fluid. So they're drinking around a bottle of fluid when it's hot and humid, when they're going to be working out for long periods of time, when maybe they're training twice a day, it probably becomes more essential that they're getting a sports drink in early on, and then obviously continuing to drink water. Post-workout, it's all about rehydration and trying to get back to normal. So I still use the old school rule of thumb, which is that urine color, because that's going to be what is easy enough for an athlete. So I always tell them like, you know, one to three on this chart, congratulations, like number four, apple juice and darker, Uh, -uh. you need to go find fluid because the body is very good at helping educate an athlete on their hydration status. So this is a good chart. Many of you have probably used this over time to be able to help an athlete understand how they should be hydrating and also rehydrating after that workout. When we talk about fluid, cramping is an issue for lots of different athletes could be in the heat and the humidity, but some of them just struggle with it. 
typically I would say that cramping is really one of three problems or a combination of them. Number one, they're tired. I don't know exactly how much I can do about that. But number two, they haven't had enough fluid or they haven't. Number three, they haven't had enough electrolytes. So we want our athletes drinking fluid but we really want them consuming sodium and potassium as well to replace what's being lost in sweat. You ask any athlete what they should eat or drink for cramping, and they're going to tell you a banana because it's high in potassium. The truth is that sodium is the culprit to cramping. So the average person loses about three times the amount of sodium in their sweat as they do potassium. So you actually need a lot more sodium. So helping educate your athletes on eating those saltier foods, adding salt to vegetables or scrambled eggs, eating salty like pretzels or crackers or nuts, trail mix, things of that nature. Of course, the potassium rich foods are important as well. Bananas and strawberries, potatoes, sweet potatoes, milk, yogurt, avocado, but really around that workout Focusing on the sodium, sports drinks are also a great way to get in those extra electrolytes for an athlete. So then kind of thinking about how we put that into meals and snacks over the course of the day, I know with athletes, you really need to like spell it out for them and give them the examples. So it is essential that they are starting their day with breakfast. I'm sure many of you are already preaching this and it needs carbohydrate and it needs protein and ideally some healthy fat. So this is a good kind of examples that you could show them. Maybe it's a whole wheat bagel with peanut butter and Greek yogurt. Maybe it's a PB and J with low fat milk. You know, what if they're like in the morning, early running out the door could be like an energy bar, beef jerky and a string cheese and a fruit or something simple like that. The key is really trying to get in that carbohydrate and protein to lay down the foundation of a steady blood sugar and giving them energy so that they're able to start accumulating the nutrition that they need over the course of the day. I like to have them think about it like this, like whether they're at the middle school, high school age, or even college, thinking about how you're shaping that plate. So where's your grain? Where's your protein? Where's your fruit? Where's your vegetable? You know, ideally we're eating as many food groups as we can at a meal, but it doesn't always work. But if you can start to train their brain, this is going to get them the adequate fluid, the adequate carbohydrate and protein that they need to fuel their bodies. Some of you might have seen these before. I wish I could tell you I created them, but they're created by the United States Olympic Center dietitians. They're called the athlete's plate. And they're basically teaching an athlete how you can sculpt your plate based on the amount of training that you're doing. For most athletes, I think the easy day of training is actually probably too little of food. Maybe if they're trying to lean out in an off season, this would work, but most athletes need more fuel than this. But just to show it to you, half of the plate is vegetables, a fourth of it is carbohydrate, a fourth of it is protein, there's fluids and some fat. This is where most of your athletes are going to be hanging out in this moderate training. I would say this is probably like a typical day of exercise where maybe they're training once a day. It's not a competition day, just a normal day. So that lunch and dinner plate should really kind of be broken into thirds, a third carbohydrate, a third vegetables, a third protein. You'll see that there's fruit that's going to add some extra carbohydrate. There's a little more fat and then there's fluid. So I'm moving my body around more, which means I have to add more fat fuel or more food to be able to energize it and give it the energy that it needs to do the activity that I'm asking it to do. So then on a hard training day, so this could be like a two a day training day. Maybe it's a day your kids are playing in a tournament. Maybe it's a game day. Now you'll see that plate has shifted. Half of it is carbohydrate. A fourth of it is protein. A fourth of it is vegetables. You see there's fruit, added fat, and fluid. So again, think nutrition periodization. I'm adding more food and more carbohydrate because I'm using my body more. So for athletes, I think that this is a really optimal way to teach them because they eat on a plate most of the time. <laughs> and so they can really think how to shape that plate based on how they're training over the course of that day, that week wherever they're at in the season. I am all about snacks. I think snacks are what hold the whole little sports nutrition puzzle together. They're like the glue, right? Between all the major meals. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner is not enough for an athlete. They've really got to focus on all the in-betweens. This is where you can help athletes really keep their energy levels up. Still trying to do carbs and protein. So is that a protein bar that has carbs and protein? Is that cheese crackers and fruit? Is that a granola bar and beef jerky? 
Do they have time? And it's like a yogurt parfait with granola and fruit. I love the energy bite recipes. I have one on here. There's lots of different ways that you can make them, but this is a great on the go fueling. They can eat this between their classes when they're, you know, moving between, you know, classes or when they're going to practice. These are really simple little bites that can give them a good amount of fuel and get them to that next eating opportunity. So really coaching your athletes on snacks consistently, because no matter what time of day their workout is, you want them to walk in with an accumulation of nutrition and snacks can really help add some extra energy for them. So then starting to move to focusing on fueling training performance and recovery very specifically. So when we talk about pre-exercise, pre-workout, pre-game, pre-whatever eating, you know, people always say, how much time should we eat in advance? So I'm going to say in a perfect world, you eat about two to four hours before the training event, before the game, whatever it is. I say in a perfect world because I don't feel like it happens very often. Many times it just doesn't fit with when lunch is or when the practice is or when the game is or whatnot. So my rule of thumb typically is the closer the meal is to the workout, the easier to digest that meal needs to be. So if I have three hours, by all means, eat spaghetti, meat sauce, a roll, salad, through, move on. If you were eating that an hour before the game, that might be a little bit too heavy. So you really have, and, and some athletes are great digesters, some are not. So again, it's kind of learning their bodies and thinking through, okay, how could I schedule my eating if, I, if my workout is close to lunch, let's say. Maybe I'm going to do a big snack mid-morning, and then I'm also going to do like a smaller lunch so that I don't feel super like it going into practice. So you can really manage this based on a schedule. If an athlete ate a while back, three to four hours or so before that workout, it's likely that they're going to need a snack. So that could be a carbohydrate snack, a carbohydrate and protein snack. Many of the ones I just showed you would be appropriate as well. So during that like pre-workout, pre-game eating, you want a decent amount of carbohydrate because again, that's going to be the fuel that's going to give them energy during the training session. You want protein, you want it lower in fat and fiber. Hear me out. They can have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. They can have whole wheat bread. I mean, don't put like roasted Brussels sprouts on your pregame meal. Sometimes those really high fiber foods can cause gastrointestinal distress for an athlete. So I try to stay away from anything that could cause that. So really high fiber vegetables, high fat foods, creamy type, garlicky, peppery type things sometimes cause indigestion for athletes. So really focusing on more of the carbs, protein, a little bit of fat, plenty of fluid. Remember I said about 16 to 20 ounces. And then in that pre-workout snack, if they need it, that can be as simple as a granola bar or a banana. If they're really hungry, that could be a protein bar and a banana, could be trail mix and a fruit. So those are things you can add based on how hungry they are and then also when they actually ate prior to your training session or to your game. So when we think about pre-game eating, because I know this is a desire to know for a lot of coaches, or maybe you're working with parents or a booster club or someone else that's planning the meal, here are some tips to kind of think in mind or keep in mind when you are writing that pregame meal and kind of thinking about it. You want to make sure that you have the complex carbohydrate to give them that long lasting energy. We want some protein, leaner protein, preferably not fried at all. We want the leaner types, a little bit of vegetables. I say easy to digest vegetables like green beans, corn, salad, et cetera. Ideally, we're going to have fruit because fruit's going to be an extra source of carbohydrate as well as a source of electrolytes, avoiding the high fat, high spice, really spicy garlicky foods, having plenty of fluid. So having water, having sports drinks readily available so that those athletes can be drinking. Very, very important. Have salt around. Salt on the table. We need athletes to get those electrolytes in and salting their food <clears throat> can really, really help. So making sure salt is available. Ideally in a pre-game or pre-competition, pre-tournament, whatever it is, meal, probably want to provide more familiar foods, things that they like, things that they're willing to eat. This is not the time to introduce new foods, I would say, but really trying to provide some of those uh, really familiar foods. And then if you have athletes that have a finicky stomach, Knowing like, do we have a smoothie available? When I worked in college sports, especially college football, 
for the love. There's so many of these players. And it's like, does everyone like what we're having? I would, if you have the ability, could, would always have like a deli, like a sandwich tray, just so that they could make like a turkey and cheese sandwich if they wanted or they didn't like what was available. I understand in high school sports, you may not be able to do that. In college, you often can. And in professional, you for sure can. So these are just some things to keep in mind. And then when we talk about actually building that pregame meal, here are just some options. So if you have parents or someone else that's going to be planning your pregame meal, showing them, or maybe you're sending this to, I used to create these and send them to hotels in advance that I wasn't traveling with a team to say, okay, carbohydrate options. I would want pasta with marinara sauce, baked potatoes, you know, rice, rice pilaf. If it's breakfast, maybe it's like oatmeal, grits, bagels, those types of foods. What do I want my protein options to be? I said easy to digest vegetables. So I like to list them out so people know what I'm talking about. And then I love providing extra bread at those pregame meals because a lot of athletes do need more calories and they might need more carbohydrate. Obviously, some players play more than others. So having some type of whole wheat roll or breadstick or cornbread or, you know, if it's that breakfast, toast and bagels, those types of granola bars and things, this can give those athletes some extra carbohydrate. So if they need it, they have some available. So here's just some examples of what that might look like. Could be scrambled eggs, whole grain bagel, fruit, sausage, you know, could be a breakfast sandwich. So these are some examples. You know, if it's dinner, it could easily be like grilled chicken with pasta, green beans, and a roll. So some good examples that you could provide to parents or whoever's planning your pregame meal. Another challenge that we often have for like those pregame snacks is like making sure we have the right kind of snacks. And a lot of times athletes don't like to eat a lot right before a game or really before a workout. So I will often focus on these, what I call nutrient dip snacks. So meaning more calories per bite. So think like trail mix, some of the bars that are out there, you know, peanut butter filled pretzels that have the salt on them, you know, some of the granola bars or granola that's out there. These are some high calorie foods that they don't have have to eat as much of them to have the fuel that they need to go to the workout. So these can be great pre-workout as well as like during those in-between times. Now, if you have athletes <clears throat> or your team trains in the morning, typically uh, athletes don't love to eat in the morning, but I always tell them you don't want to run sprints either, but you figure out how to do it and you can teach your body to run faster, jump higher, and lift heavier, you can by all means teach it to eat a granola bar. Might take some time, but you can. So for a cardio workout, maybe a lighter workout, I think athletes can hang out with carbohydrate. Maybe it's a bagel, granola bar, banana. But when we start talking about more intense training sessions, your bigger, larger athletes, like I remember my TCU baseball team used to train from seven to eight 30 in the morning in the weight room. If I give them a banana, they're going to pass out. They need like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and a banana. So in the situations with intense workouts, weight training, larger athletes, I do like to add protein as easy as possible to that pre-workout snack in the morning, just a bar or something like that. Peanut butter is often going to be a good example. If you have athletes that are going to be playing in tournaments, or maybe you work with endurance athletes, could be swimmers, could be runners. Uh, I often encourage them to start carb loading. You think about that from like marathons, but I will actually start recommending carb loading the day before, meaning that they're just focusing on eating a little more carbohydrate at each of their meals and snacks. Typically a day before a major event, a major competition or a tournament, they're not going to be eating as, I mean, they're not going to be training as much. So if I increase the carbohydrate, I'm ideally maximizing their stores. So like I said, it's eating though, just a little more carbohydrate at each meal and snack, adding more salt, adding more fluid, trying to prepare their body and get it as well fueled and hydrated as possible to go into a day of a lot of training or a lot of movement. If you have early morning competitions, less likely in like football or something like that, but in volleyball or soccer or running, you know, make those athletes get up. If it's a training day, okay, fine. They can just do a snack. But if it's going to be a competition day, they really need to get up and eat something that's easy to digest. Think bagel, peanut butter, banana sports drink, you know, depending on what they like. Could be a smoothie if they like that. So simple, familiar foods, but carb, protein, plenty of fluid and electrolytes to help fuel them to get to that morning competition or morning game. 
During a workout, the goal is really about hydration. I already mentioned this, but five to 10 ounces of fluid every 15 to 20 minutes during exercise. So the idea is that they're clearing about a bottle of fluid an hour. Water or sports drink for workouts or games or whatnot that are going to be a lot longer than 90 minutes, you definitely want to start putting a sports drink in to provide carbohydrate or sugar to help keep their energy levels up as well as provide the fluid, but then also electrolytes. If they're training twice a day, I would might put the sports drink in even earlier and they can drink it earlier, but I'm just saying they have, they really need to start implementing it if they're going to be going through a really long training bout. If not, they're more likely to become dehydrated and really start running through their carbohydrate stores, which ultimately is going to make them start tapping into lean muscle mass as a source of energy and probably getting slower at your workout and less powerful. So the carbohydrate and electrolytes can really help there. If you have athletes that are training, maybe they are go to practice, then they're going to go to the weight room or like high school sports. They could be going from track to summer or to spring football or something like that. Giving something, I already mentioned these dense foods, some carbohydrate, a little bit of protein can really help kind of give a little boost of energy getting to that max workout. If you've had a kid practicing for two hours and now you take them to the weight room, there's no way they're going to have a really good lifting session, especially if they're actually trying to get stronger. So giving them fluid, some carbon protein can really help in regards to giving them some energy to get through the rest of that workout. If you have, if you are a coach that coaches sports with half times, having snacks at halftime is important. These are the things you want to think about carbohydrate for quick energy, again, salt. So salty carbohydrates could be goldfish, could be pretzels, something of that nature. Foods that don't have like food safety issues. So probably don't set out yogurt and hard boiled eggs. If you need it for protein, I would say protein bars or like beef jerky sticks or something similar. A little bit of healthy fat. I mean, when I worked in the NFL, we use peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. They love it, digest pretty easily. And we could move on peanut butter and jelly or peanut butter and banana. And then obviously <clears throat> plenty of water and sports drinks for hydration. So having these foods readily available at halftime is going to be important. So especially your athletes that are playing a lot can get some more fuel in them to go through the second half of that game. So then when we talk about post-workout, post-workout is all about recovery. So I like to say that recovery has three R's, replenish, rebuild, rehydrate. Replenish means you need carbohydrate to replace the energy that was burned off during exercise. Rebuild means you need protein to start repairing the lean muscle mass that was damaged. Obviously, rehydrate means you're going to need that fluid. So we have this two-hour window after a workout. And basically, in that little window, your body is primed to recover. So it's going to take up glucose or sugar, carbohydrate a lot more quickly. It wants that protein to start recovering. So the recommendation is that an athlete eats a carbohydrate and protein snack as soon as possible after that workout session. We say within 45 minutes, but I tell them if you can do it in five minutes, do it in five. Because during a workout, your body goes into what I call breakdown mode. <laughs> Catabolism is the fancy science word. Nutrition puts your body into anabolism or building and recovery mode. So the faster that I can get your body out of breakdown mode into recovery mode, I'm going to start that recovery process. So ideally, we're talking about a quick snack and then following that up with either a meal or a larger snack. So in that immediate post-workout window, we want simple digesting carbohydrate. So simple meaning like the carbohydrate you would find in fruit, honey, milk, a lot of the post-workout ready to drink shakes that exist. So a lot of parents are like, oh my gosh, those have sugar in them. And I'm like, that's the point. They meant to put it in there because it digests quickly to promote that glycogen or carbohydrate replenishment. And then in the protein world, we really want about 20-ish grams of high quality protein, specifically looking for leucine. So leucine is a branch chain amino acid. It's found in like milk and dairy and whey protein and all the different foods, the high protein foods. But that leucine is really like the muscle, like the light switch to muscle resynthesis. So getting that high quality protein is key. So the window is about 15 to 25 grams of protein. If you have larger athletes, like in the NFL, I have guys that weigh 315, 320 pounds. And they were like, I weigh 200 pounds more than you. How do we need the same amount of protein post-workout? 
Well, they probably could benefit from a little bit more. So you'll see the number here is about 0.25 to 0.3 grams per kilogram body weight. Typically, this is going to put a larger athlete in that 30 to 40 gram window. The research suggests that after 40 grams of protein, the body is not using it for muscle resynthesis. Are you digesting and absorbing the protein? Yes, but your body is no longer using it for muscle resynthesis. So get in that window, 20, 25, 30-ish grams, then wait your little, you know, go change clothes, take a shower, then get another 25, 30-ish grams in that post-workout meal or snack. When we talk about the third R of rehydration, we want athletes drinking at least 16 ounces of fluid, 24 ounces per pound lost if they are training multiple times a day. So if your athletes weigh themselves, say for instance, like football, you could go 16 ounces per pound lost. If they don't, I go back to the urine chart color. Try to keep hydrating until you get to pale yellow to clear, because that's going to be your body's sign that it's gotten back to that rehydration state. What I love about like rehydration is you can use water, sports drink, milk, chocolate milk, smoothie, post-workout shake. All of those are going to contribute to your post-workout hydration. And the reality is sometimes those are the most convenient and easy, and they're providing all three R's, the carbohydrate, the protein, and the fluid to replenish, rebuild, and rehydrate. So that's optimal for a lot of athletes because it's a quick and easy way to get in that post-workout nutrition. Then we'll follow up with another meal or snack. So it could be a bigger snack if it's not time for a meal. Then we go back to the plate theory. So really focusing on getting more complex carbohydrates, more protein, you can put veggies or whatnot there, plenty of fluid, still adding those electrolytes. So salting your food would be important. So a snack and a meal, or at least a snack and a heavier snack in that two hour window post-workout. For many of you probably that work with younger athletes could be college though too. A lot of them go to practice and they have to go straight to school or to class. So they don't have the opportunity to go home to eat. And many of them don't eat, which blows my mind. So I'm all about the brown bag of breakfast, giving your athletes a list. All right, put beef jerky, a granola bar, a little peanut butter pack and a fruit in your bag so that you can eat that after. If they can run through the cafeteria and get milk or chocolate milk, fantastic, great way to hydrate and to get some of that carbohydrate and protein in. But these are just some examples that can really help an athlete get the fuel that they need, but in a pretty like easy, convenient way if they need to eat very quickly before getting to class or going to school in the morning. So then finally, watch my time talking about fueling schedules. These are just examples. Like I said, we're going to give you these handouts, but it's kind of showing you just how you would shape the day based on your training. So if your athlete is training in the morning, they're eating a snack before they go, they're going to hydrate during their workout. Maybe they're getting some quick chocolate milk while they get in the shower, then they're going to eat breakfast. They could just go straight to breakfast, but oftentimes we would have them have a snack. They might have a snack mid-morning, maybe not, depending on what time they ate. Lunch, afternoon snack, dinner, most athletes are going to need a snack at nighttime. And these are just some food examples to show you what that looks like. If they're training in the afternoon, starting with breakfast, mid-morning snack if needed, depending on what breakfast is, lunch, but then for sure, pre-workout snack, hydrate, post-workout, dinner, and the, your afternoon worker outers really need a snack at nighttime to really finish off that recovery process. If they train twice a day, eating is now your part-time job, and you'll see it's really just about having those snacks in. This is a challenge because athletes really have to be prepared. So I tell them, put stuff in your backpack, put it in your locker, have it around so that you have food available if you forgot to bring it. Things like trail mix, granola bars, protein bars can be really easy solutions to get the body pretty good fuel in a very time crunch situation. So this would be kind of like what you might show your athletes for a two-a-day training schedule. Then finally, this might look like a game day if they're playing at nighttime. So having breakfast, a maybe an earlier lunch, if they do a shake route workout, maybe they're doing a smoothie or something. And then having that earlier pregame meal, 3, 3.34, if your game is at 6.37, probably having some snacks available because after a warm up, athletes are often very hungry. Snacks at halftime, 
then doing dinner, maybe even finishing off with a snack, a chocolate milk, a smoothie before they go to bed. So it's a lot of information and it takes a lot for an athlete, but ideally this can really help fuel their bodies appropriately. So if you live in Texas, where I am, I've actually created a sports nutrition program for Texas high schools in combination with Texas Beef Council that we are going to be giving away for free. All you people that don't live in Texas, I don't know what to tell you. I guess I'm going to have to come to your state and create a program for you as well. But if you're interested in that, you can scan this little QR code down at the bottom or go to sportsnutritiongameplan.com going to include video content, longer educational videos like I'm doing. They're like 20 minutes long, short videos, handouts, blogs, tips for coaches to like blast out to their athletes. So really designed to make it very easy for a coach to follow and be able to share that nutrition information with their players. So with that being said, here is my contact information. And I wanted to show you, this is the QR code that goes to my book. So for years and years, I got asked uh, by coaches and trainers and parents of middle school, high school athletes for a really quick handy dandy resource so they didn't have to read a book. I would say that this works for athletes of all ages and spaces, but it was geared at making sure I covered everything, middle school, high school, all of those things. And it's really designed to be like charts, bullet points. You know, parents want to know, all right, what do I do when I'm in a drive through or we're at the basketball tournament and we're at that Hampton Inn breakfast, continental breakfast buffet, what do we eat? So it's got lists in here, it's got snacks, it's sold on my website right here, but it's the sports nutrition playbook, handy dandy little flip book. So if you're interested, that'll take you to it. If you're on social media, I try to post good social media stuff, lots of sports nutrition stuff regularly on Instagram. My handle is amyg.rd. So I'd love to connect with you there. Facebook, if you could find me under Amy Goodson. And then that's my email as well as my website. So I'm going to open it up for questions that I think Nate is going to help me with. But if you don't, you have a question later, you need to go, please feel free to email me. I'm happy to get back with you and answer your questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amy. That was incredible information, especially for these coaches. Uh, one quick question we had was, um, one of the guys here has two vegetarians and one vegan. Um, he just says if she can touch on that topic. Sure thing, sure thing. So plant-based eating, it, it's possible with sports nutrition, obviously. Uh, you have to be a little more strategic. So a few things when I'm working with plant-based or vegan athletes, first, I make sure why they're doing it. If it's female athletes, I really do a deep dive here because sometimes they, this could be related to disordered eating or eating disorders. And they say they're going vegetarian or vegan. And so just so they can cut out food groups so they don't have to eat all of those foods. So that might be one thing, depending on if you're you're dealing with female athletes. Not always the case, but it's a good check to go through. The other thing would be really focusing on getting protein becomes the highest concern. And so trying to focus on getting those plant-based proteins. So whether it's the beans, the lentils, nuts, seeds, the soy-based foods like tofu and whatnot, if they are a vegetarian that will eat dairy, or and or eggs, I would encourage that because those are high quality protein sources. So if they would eat milk, cheese, yogurt, eggs, that can help get that protein in. Oftentimes with athletes, depending on their age, like I really have to use a protein powder if they're a vegan specifically and then blend it into a smoothie to help get the protein in because typically they're running low and they tend to focus more on carbohydrates and it just does not suffice the amount of protein that they need. So I have some, if you want some more information, I have it in the book too about uh, plant-based eating, but I'm happy to send you some content if you want to email me just to kind of show you what meals and snacks might look like in that space. But especially if it's like a pre-game meal or something, they really have to be kind of self-responsible to make sure that they're getting adequate protein at that meal, plant-based protein. Awesome. We got a question here from a wrestling coach who says, in wrestling, sometimes meals get smaller. What is the best all-purpose snack? Oh, interesting. So wrestling's a challenge, yes, because of all the weight cutting and stuff. I'll say my first recommendation, specifically with high school and college wrestling, when they weigh in so much closer 
to the like to the actual event is trying to start losing weight earlier so that they don't have to cut as much closer to. So trying to focus on leaning out and still eating well and fueling their bodies, but leaning out and getting up to that weigh in. What I would say after, if the question is in regards to after the weigh in to giving them the fuel twofold. So number one, I would go with my really dense foods that provide more calories per bite. So think like, like protein granola, think like trail mix and a banana, something that they're going to get a lot of nutrition for a few bites. There's a variety of bars out there. Like there's a brand called Bobo's and they make these little bitty muffins and they're literally 150 calories a muffin. So those are really quick bites that you could get, but also supplementing with quick digesting carbohydrate. So that could be a sports drink, could be like the energy chews that like Gatorade and Cliff, all of those kind of brands have, um, because you want that quick digesting carbohydrate to really give them the quick energy. So dense foods to get them the energy to start competing, but some of that quick energy for more of that quick burst and get them going. And then I would recommend sports drinks and like energy chews or the little gel, even like gels that you would see in marathons and things like that, like between the matches just to give them that extra kind of jolt of carbohydrate and then rehydrating them the best as possible, because we know that re that dehydration is going to cause a decrease in performance. Awesome. Thank you. And then um, we have another question here. They have shortened our 60 game halftime to five minutes. What would be your top two snacks to consume in that short of a time? You know, top sure. two yeah. 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 Wow, five minutes, huh? That's a real struggle bus right there. So I would say if you have access to a bar, like a, a granola base, like a protein type bar would probably be your best like protein bar and fluid, just because it doesn't take a lot of preparation. You can just like throw it at them. That would be ideal. The other thing I would probably go with would be like trail mix and fruit. So like if you could buy, think of like Sam's and Costco, where you can buy those individual bags of trail mix, where you can just rip it off and just start shoveling it down and maybe have like a banana. So it could be very easy to grab and go, like logistically speaking, and so that they could just get it in. Even like the little bags of trail mix and a banana would work. One of my other go-tos is Uncrustables. <laughs> I used to use these in the NFL. I mean, it's just genius. They're the little frozen peanut butter and jelly, y'all know, peanut butter jelly sandwiches, and they're individually packaged. And so you freeze them, you set them out, they're ready by halftime. The guys can eat them so quickly, rip open the bag. It's individual, decent calories, about 350 ish or so, depending on which one calories. Um, and they like them, which is key. So, pretty simple way to fuel them quickly and then get them back out. I mean, yeah, I eat Uncrustables daily and I don't even work out anymore. So they're just- Y'all, when, I'm not even joking with you. When I worked for the Cowboys for four and a half years, you would have thought I was laying out liquid gold when I laid out the Uncrustables. I mean, they loved them. And I'm like, well, what, this makes y'all happy? Then so be it. But I, we used them all the time on the road because it was so easy. They're awesome. We got another question here. What would be a good go-to snack for a high school athlete who has lunch at- from 10 30 to 11 and then a cross country race at four. Okay, so 10 30 to 11, I would try to get a pretty solid lunch in if I could there. And then if race is at four, probably like 2 30, I would do something really dense again. So if you could do like a trail mix that had granola in it, so think like nuts, dried fruit, and like protein granola. There's a few brands that have the granola that has like 10 grams of protein per serving. Like Nature Valley has one. I think Bare Naked has one. And then Kind Bar has one. So that would be great because you can put it in a little baggie, super easy to eat. Runners do not like eating very much before they run. We all know that. So a little bag of something like that. The little bars that you can find that are really dense, like I'll just rattle some off that I know of. Pro, Pro Bar makes a meal bar that's about 360 calories. That's about that big. Cliff now makes Cliff Duos bars and they're about this big and they're 180 calories. So two of those little bars would work. I mentioned the Bobo's like little bites. They're oat-based. They have about four grams of protein each. I mean, two or three tiny muffins, you get 300 to 450 calories. So some of those foods that are really designed at the athletic space, I would say, can give a good amount of calories without a lot of effort. The other thing would be the energy bites, doing the energy bites that are like the base is, I had it up there, peanut butter, honey, oats, whey protein powder. They can get fancy and put nut seeds, you know, dried fruit, whatever they want. 
but a few of those, they're really dense and they make you drink because they're, they'll make you thirsty. But again, two or three little balls or bites, and they're going to get good energy without feeling like it's heavy on their stomach. Awesome. That's great information. And we had a question. Uh, how do you choose what protein powder to use? There are so many options. There are so many options. So first things first, we want to make sure that that protein powder is third party tested because we want to make sure it doesn't have anything illegal, impermissible, or laced into it. So the way you choose a third party type tested powder is to look at NSF Sport. So nsfsport.com, you can search by protein. I mean, sorry, you can search by brand or by product or informedchoice.org. So informed choice is the other one. That's the World Anti-Doping Agency kind of like thing of approval. NSF Sport, they also have an app in SF Sport, pretty easy. So you can search by product or you can search by brand. So first we want it to be third-party tested so that we take out issues with lacing, spiking, anything impermissible or illegal. Next, whatever tastes good. I mean, honestly, like I still like whey protein. It's the quickest digesting protein. It's the highest in leucine, as I mentioned, little light switch to muscle resynthesis, but most other protein powders will add in different amino acids if they don't have enough leucine. So at that point, I would say once it's third-party tested, it's really going to boil down to taste and preference by the athlete. Awesome. We got two more questions here. Um, one talks about an athlete, athlete with celiac disease. What do you recommend for high carbohydrate for a free exercise snack? Sure thing. So for those of you that don't know, celiac disease means they have an allergy to gluten, which is the protein found in wheat, bran, those types of foods. So nowadays there are so many options that are gluten-free. So you're really looking for those carbohydrate-based options that are either like rice-based, rice flour-based, potato-based. There's a lot of different products that are made out there. So there's granola bars, there's crackers, there's bagels. It's really brand specific, I would say. Um, so you can really get a decent amount of carbohydrate and in, but you're looking more at ones that are made with flowers that are like brown rice flour, oat flour is phenomenal. So my little energy bites, I just told you those would work. So anything made with oats or oat flour, and then you could look at things made with like potato flour, some of the different ones out there. But if you just search like gluten-free carbohydrates, like there's so many out there and, and they're typically in a different area at the grocery store. So some of that, if you work with Younger athletes, that might be on the low to the parent to bring something specific, but it's an older athlete, just making sure they're aware of where they can find those foods. Um, because there's so, like when I first started in sports nutrition, they're like none, zero. Now there's quite a few. And so you can still fuel your body really well with just a gluten-free carbohydrate. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, we have one more question here before we close it down. Oh, and um, my colleague here is Sassy. As a gluten allergy, it's just that RX bars are not available. Oh, yes. All right. Wait, wait, I didn't totally hear that. Yes, RX bars are gluten free. You can, uh, there's a handful, and they make oats now, everything. Kind Bar is another brand that's totally gluten free. Simple Mills is a, a brand that's gluten free. Udi's is a brand that's like more like breads, bagels, English muffins. They're gluten free um, and they're made with gluten free grains. Sometimes gluten free foods are made with cauliflower things, which means for an athlete, that's probably not going to provide enough carbohydrate. So you really want to make sure that whatever you're looking at, whatever product it is, that it's actually made with a gluten free grain so that they are getting the actual carbohydrate that they need to fuel the activity that they're doing. Awesome, thank you. Then it looks like we have the last question here. For college golf, we typically play 36 holes in one day nonstop. What would be the best way for that to sustain the energy throughout the day? You said college golf, right? Yes. Okay. Y'all, yeah, golf, professional golfers were my first, like first athletes to ever work with. And I've worked with one yesterday, the day before, and one of my guys on the PGA tour just texted me today. So this is the week for golf in my life. So golf to me is all about the consistency of eating combinations of carbs and protein. So you want to make sure and get them up early, get a good breakfast foundation, plenty of fluid. And then from a like playing, I usually recommend them eating every four or five holes. So like eat at four or five, eat at the turn and just eat consistently. And this is even if they don't feel hungry because a lot of golfers, they're focused on playing. They will not feel hungry or thirsty, but if they don't eat, their blood sugar starts to decline, which can make you feel nauseous, sick, headache, 
Worst case, mental acuity starts to decline. Very bad in golf. <laughs> so the types of foods that I recommend, easy carb protein combinations. I've said trail mix about a hundred times, but trail mix with some granola in it can be great, really dense. The energy bites that I just mentioned, again, really dense. Some of the bars that I mentioned, the Pro Bar, the Bobo's Little Muffins, the Cliff Duo bars, they're not coated. So I'm always looking for something that's not gonna melt in the sun. So non-coated energy bars can be great as well. The peanut butter filled pretzels, the ones that have the big pieces of salt on them, that can be a fantastic option. Peanut butter crackers can be a good option as well. These are things that they can just quickly pop in their mouth. They get a kind of a combination of carb protein or carb healthy fat. They could even do like a a beef jerky with a banana or a beef jerky with a granola bar, because again, you're getting some protein and carbs, but you're also getting salt. And so when you're outside for long periods of time, whether you're in the heat or not, it can be a, a long day of you're sweating. And so really trying to focus on some of those more salty carbohydrates as well. And then I just tell golfers to place them throughout the day, like they plan everything else. Like, don't wonder when you're going to eat, like you're, I'm going to eat at four, I'm going to eat at nine, I'm going to eat at 14 and just build that into your routine so that you prevent those blood sugar issues from happening before they happen and not trying to fix them. Because once your blood sugar is low, and even if you eat something, you got about 15 or 20 minutes before you feel better again. And that can be quite a bit of golf. So, and staying on top of hydration as well is going to be important. If they're drinking a sports drink, that's fine, but you want to make sure that they would be consuming protein as well so that the carbohydrate in the sports drink doesn't cause a blood sugar spike. Awesome. Well, thank you. This was phenomenal information. And just, just one more question personally. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Amy? Wait, say that again. Is a hot dog a sandwich? A hot dog. You know, it's a good question. And you know, what's funny, like the Cowboys used to put hot dogs in the locker room. I was like, well, I guess technically it's a carb and a protein. I mean, ideally I would want it to have a leaner protein, but worst case scenario, it can get the job done. <laughs> Sometimes you got to work with that. <laughs> that's, been a, that's been a long time debate. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Well, thank you so much. This is amazing. Again, yes. Thank you to everyone for coming.